Slater. so whacked out on Prozac. <laughs> well, what do you think of the place? Welcome to the first show. Uh, nice set, huh? Had some Amish friends over today. We had a set raising. And <laughs> don't get too comfy with it, though. It's trompe l'oeil and I'm a hologram. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's meet our band, Andy Summers. Yeah. Andy, formerly of the police, uh, let go last year in the wake of the Rodney King beating, and <laughs> happy to have him with us. Our announcer, the lovely one, Nick Bakai. Nick Hello, Dennis. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, every day, Dennis, to me, it's like a little miracle, and I am but a handmaiden to its greatness. A man like other men, and yet somehow strangely singular. Okay, good. Uh, why can't you be a nice boy like Andy, huh? <laughs> well, what's new in the news? The uh, Democrats had their debate yesterday. Uh, you know, the party is like watching a Volkswagen at a circus. You just think, God, how'd they get that many clowns in there? <laughs> See, they're having an uproar about that nude painting of George Bush at the Maryland Art Gallery. Uh, you know, maybe Bush should have thought about the consequences before he posed for it. And <laughs> I've seen the painting, and apparently the economy isn't the only thing sagging in this country right now. <laughs> hey, <laughs> sure, George and Babs have tuned in for the premiere. Just kidding. <laughs> While in New Hampshire, uh, Bush tried to drop in on some workers up there, but most of the businesses were closed down. Uh, only thing open was U-Haul, Suicide Hotline, and Sununu's travel agent. And <laughs> according to the New York Times, Upjohn, the people who make Halcyon, do you know what Halcyon is? That's that sleeping drug. They evidently gave it to Bush after he vomited in Japan. Well, they, uh, they've been accused of concealing evidence that Halcyon causes serious psychiatric side effects. Now, the chairman of Upjohn, Dr. Theodore Cooper, denied it, telling reporters, it's like I told Enrico Caruso yesterday in the dirigible, the delicious cupcakes are safe. <laughs> I haven't yet mastered that Carson slash Houdini-like ability to extricate myself from the bad joke. <laughs> See, there's something to be said for humbling yourself. <laughs> Speaking of psychiatric side effects, Jeffrey Dahmer, the Milwaukee cannibal, he's changed his plea this week from insanity to cuckoo for neighbor pups. <laughs> See quail golfing this week? Quail went golfing with Bob Hope and Gerald Ford at the Bob Hope Desert Classic. At one point, Quail hooked a drive into some deep jungle-like brush and then used his father's connections to avoid going in after it. <laughs> yeah, Qu Quail deserves the vice presidency like Elvis deserved his black belt. <laughs> L.A. Police Chief Daryl Gates said this week he thinks he can run for mayor of Los Angeles and win. Of course, you know, Gates thinks he can beat anybody. And, uh, <laughs> finally... Great, the doors kick in. I'm being maced on national TV. And uh, finally, I read today that uh, Pete Rose is now doing a radio show in Florida. Of course, 
Pete was recently kept out of the Baseball Hall of Fame because of his gambling conviction. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this the Baseball Hall of Fame? And isn't Pete Rose famous for what he accomplished in baseball? And isn't it about time we stop? <laughs> isn't it about time we stop confusing people's personal lives with their professional lives before we end up with nobody in the Hall of Fame and submoronic nerds in the White House and a nation full of snoops and busybodies too busy to worrying about the personal lives of their neighbors to ever beat the Japan people in anything but pie and donut consumption? Pete Rose <laughs> is a world champion. Pete Rose got more hits than anybody else in the history of baseball, and Pete Rose did it all with the worst haircut in the history of the world. <laughs> And he should be in the Hall of Fame. We've... Well, we've got a great show for you. We've got Tommy Hanks, Bonnie Raitt, Christian Slater, and uh, Andy. <laughs> This portion of the Dennis Miller Show is brought to you by Don Dishwashing Liquid. It takes grease out of your way. Okay, so I had one moment of weakness, you know, on sale, name brand. So I switched from my Dawn to another liquid, and that's when I learned that a bargain in the store went in my sink. I mean, I had to add more of that stuff just to finish the pans. Some value. Not like my Dawn. Look, the suds come back, proving Dawn still got the power to keep on cleaning. Will I switch again? <laughs> I'm thrifty, not crazy. Dawn takes grease out of your way. And that's the real value. It was just another Saturday afternoon. Until those old guys came out of the woods. With axes. Just when they thought it couldn't get any weirder. It did. They even brought their own music. Fellas, how about a cold bud? A bud? Obviously, we thought a light. Oh, that's cold. Emily, you're drowning your waffles. I don't think they can breathe anyway. They're swimming in calories. First they were drowning, now they're swimming. Okay. Don't expect to wear any miles. Look, it's log cabin light. It's got half the calories of regular log cabin. That's why Mom gets it. How's it taste? Oh, you wouldn't like it. I only put too much on by accident. Log Cabin Light Syrup, irresistibly rich maple flavor with just half the calories. Nora, you're drowning your waffles. Here comes huh? something big from Extra Sugar Free Gum. It's <laughs> pink, it's got NutraSweet, and a great classic bubblegum flavor. It's new Extra Classic Bubblegum. And since it's extra, that big classic flavor lasts an extra, extra, extra long time. So if you're chewing something else, get ready for a tremendous breakthrough and try new extra classic bubblegum. Classic bubblegum flavor that lasts an extra long time. He looks like a host. Let's see if he can talk. Um, what do you think of this? Nice back here? We have a, uh, yeah. Sort of a pointillist depiction of Los Angeles at night. We call it Sunday in Griffith Park with George. And you know, <laughs> thought that would fly. <laughs> que surat, surat. Well. One thing we're going to do different here each night, we buy our studio audience their very own lottery ticket. Uh, if you win the lottery, you get to all split the prize. I think there are like 230 people here tonight. We are in the California Super Lotto, and the quick pick numbers are 12, 26, 29, 39, 44, 45. Reminds me of actress June Wilkinson. But, uh, okay, blast from the past. But uh, anyway, we'll keep you posted if you win. We all divvy it up, and don't forget, I get a share. We have some opening night telegrams here. I'd like to share with you some of our friends checking in. First off, we have uh, Dear Dennis, swing baby, but always work clean, Frank. <laughs> I, knew be, I knew the big guy would be there for me. Dennis, break a leg. Hey, these are the first words I've written in 30 years. Feels good, maybe I'll take it up again. J.D. Salinger, thank you, J.D. <laughs> Dennis, leaving SNL was a good move. Now things will really start happening for you. Charles Rocket. Thank you, Charles. Uh, 
Dear Dennis, cheers to you and your work on our, the program. We've always loved you in those beer commercials. Signed, the Kennedys. Wow. <laughs> Hey, Dennis, congratulations. Can I do your show? Joe Piscopo. <laughs> All right. And, uh, Dennis, congratulations. Nice to see someone else is working today, the state of Arizona. Thank you all <laughs> for checking in. And, uh, tonight, we're going to do our new feature, For and Against. Uh, last week, scientists discovered two new planets outside the solar system, once again, fueling the age-old argument about <laughs> Got a little combo from Star Wars kicked in over there. Once again, fueling the age-old argument about intelligent life in space. Tonight's for and against feature is UFOs. I think you'll get the idea here. Just follow the bouncing premise. The uh, case for UFOs. They instill a sense of wonder in an otherwise jaded populace. The case against, they don't exist. Be gentle, first name. <laughs> the case for UFOs often take simple folk into space. The case against, they bring them back. <laughs> well, you don't have to get sucky about it. Uh, the case for aliens have mastered intergalactic travel and probably have huge craniums. The case against, we are annihilated as a race the first time someone yells, hey, Melonhead! <laughs> Case four, they might teach us new ways to communicate. The case against, their language might involve kneeing us rhythmically in the genitals. <laughs> it's a dialogue. The case four, their technology could help us feed our world. The case against, our plump, tasty bodies could help feed their world. <laughs> the case four, aliens frequently visit me in the middle of the night and explore me with rectal probes. The case against, well, at least I think they're aliens. <laughs> no. Nothing like a good rectal probe joke to get the audience involved. The case for, they're exciting to look at because you don't know what they are. The case against, so are transvestites. The case for UFOs provide a funny, apolitical topic for party chat. The case against, when the subject is UFOs, the party is over. <laughs> the case for UFOs look really cool. The case against, I never get to see any because I'm happy with my life and don't spend all day hoping for a green four-eyed bleb from Zebulon 9 is coming to land on my carport and get me out of my marriage. So, that's the case for and against UFOs. We, uh, thank you. Now, what's your lottery number? <laughs> you weren't even paying attention to me, were you? We'll be right back. We've got Tom Hanks and Monty Wright and Christian Slater. We'll be right back with Tom after this. <laughs> winds whipping up to 35 miles per hour with snow drifting in some parts up to four feet. Meanwhile, over at the stadium earlier, the Bulls were victorious, 122 to 109. Michael Jordan leading all scores with 37. And the basketball scores around the country. Where I grew up in Dakota, there's a guy named Danny Healy. He had this 57 Cadillac, and he used to drive us around to uh, play ball games in Montana, Dakota. Sometimes he'd be in that car six or seven hours. That was a classic, that Cadillac. But so was Denny. We'd come back late at night, we'd be talking about the game, about winning, about competitiveness, about teamwork. I learned a lot from Denny Healy, considering the length of those trips. I learned a lot about a comfortable ride. of your round ball playing field. 94 feet. Who's taller, you or Larry Bird? Larry's taller, but I'm better looking. Come on, come on, ask him, hey, why you stick your tongue out when you shoot? How did you get where you are today? 
Chevy. Chevy? I drove today. I had an uncle that was a Cadillac dealer in Wolf Point, Montana, so I rode in Cadillacs a lot when I was a kid. It's a quality car. It's, it's a car that has an image that I've appreciated and, and uh, liked. It kind of speaks for itself as to uh, a form of excellence, something that is, uh, has been well thought out, not just uh, you know now, but in the past, too. I believe we make good products in this country. And Cadillac's the one that represents that. First guest has impressed everyone with his range in films like Splash, Punchline, Bonfire, The Vanities. He was nominated for an Academy Award for his performance in Big. He is, of course, an actor. <laughs> Please welcome Tom Hanks. <laughs> They love you, babe. I know, but I'm, sh I'm shaking like a leaf, pal. You're I don't the know new about Jimmy you. Stewart. This country no. loves you. Stop it. Stop it. I'm just here loaded with self-serving patter to inaugurate this, your own talk show. I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you. You know, tough to get people to go first in this town, man. It's like uh, fast dancing in a wedding reception. Nobody wants to get out there first. So. I appreciate you coming oh, in. It's an, it's an honor and a, and a pleasure, and I guess the plaque goes where? Right there. Uh, like uh, Tom Hanks thing right there? Beautiful. One small step nice for showbiz. Nice too. I feel like I want to apply for a loan with you here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's witty banter here I, at Late Night, huh? I feel like I want to see some credentials for that loan. <laughs> now, you know, it surprises me that you'd be nervous at all because it's Saturday Night Live. We always looked at you as like, the Calvary. You always had, uh, you did it five times when I was uh, yeah, there, Well, didn't you? six counting the reunion show. Yeah. <laughs> you were always the, <laughs> you were always the coolest cat there. Oh, well, huh? that's a high praise indeed, my friend. Did, now, when did you learn to do it exactly? Did you have it knocked okay, the first time? Okay, the deal or? is, <clears throat> the first time you do the show, you can't imagine you're there and you think, oh, oh, look, there's where John Belushi did drugs. <laughs> and, and you could point and almost all anywhere. Much everywhere. <laughs> You yeah. just go like it, was, that. it was the 70s, so. Uh, then the second time you do the show, you can't believe they ask you back, so you're kind of cocky, and the show always goes pretty poorly that second time. Yeah. But the, the third time you do the show is really when you figure out how the show operates and how to pace yourself, and don't stay up late Monday and Tuesday nights eating bad food with the guys up on the 17th floor. Going that's, out with Lovitz. You know, and... Oh, well, yeah, I mean, that's, you learn that actually the first show, but... Uh, now, didn't you, uh, didn't you have some weird moment with... Uh, Keith Richards there, your third well, show in? Well, yeah, the third show was Keith Richards was a musical guest when he was out with uh, that band, of, uh, the band, the expensive wine. Waddy Walked Out. and Steve yeah. Jordan and all those guys. And uh, the host's uh, dressing room was right next to the, the band's dressing room. So sooner or later, you know, Keith kind of wandered in. Uh, it's on. Um, uh. <laughs> and he plops himself down and we start chatting. You know, we were there for 45 minutes and all the time I'm thinking, Keith Richards! Just sitting here, and uh, eventually I was able to discern what it was he was saying. You whipped out, uh, like, <laughs> whipped out your it? Keith to English dictionary. I was with a band, you know. <laughs> Well, Keith, how, I mean, like, when you go into a studio, do you know what you're gonna, you, you have it, like, written down, what you're gonna do? Uh, yeah, Mick does, you know, that I was trying to, like, make it work. Beautiful. That was, well, you know, they're getting Keith. up there, those boys. Uh, Billy Wyman hey. stepped down this week. They ran a carbon-14 test <laughs> on him, and it was time to go. And, uh, <laughs> Jagger, I just saw him in the ad for Free Jack. And, <laughs> Boy, they, they gotta cut him in half those and count the rings there, too. Are, he is, uh, <laughs> count the rings. Mick, 
Nick's getting up there. How much does each ring represent, though? Is that's my question. It's like, kind of 30 rings, and I think each one is five years. Two and a half years, yeah, something I believe. Like that. Or three tours, depending on the case. Now, what you're doing? Uh, you just got back from doing a film in Indiana with uh, Madonna, yes, a baseball I in, film. <clears throat> I was in Evansville, Indiana, with Madonna and Gina Davis and Penny Marshall. Now, I, I, I know <laughs> Madonna knows how to uh, work a bottle. How is she with a bat? Is she good? Is she a good player? She's an excellent player, and she's what a position? Real <laughs> no, I didn't even mean that. Come on, don't make me slap you. Uh, right, right up the middle there in center field. She was the center fielder. <laughs> the say hey kid. That's right. She just free roamed out there around the uh, around center field. She was very good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's you guys shot it at Wrigley Field. We were in uh, Evansville, Indiana for uh, the better part of two months, but prior to that we were in Chicago and we did shoot in, in Wrigley Field, yeah. Which was tough because, uh, <laughs> you know, this is really a funny story, Dennis. <laughs> Lead me into it, Tommy. Well, I'll tell you. You know what's kooks? First of all, great town, Chicago. We, uh, we were the... It's a toddler oh, it's, It is, you know, it's great. Rush Street. The, uh, the, there was another movie that shot in Wrigley Field before us, yeah. the, the Babe. Because mm -hmm. I can't make movies unless there's six movies exactly like it before I actually go <laughs> in, front of the, in front of the cameras. And uh, evidently, the crew and the cast from The Babe just ripped the field to ribbons. And Andre Dawson evidently got very upset about it. As a matter of fact, they even put up a stat on the broadcast afterwards, like, Cubs, before game, before films, so many, so many fielding percentage uh, errors and whatnot. Cubs after Babe and League of Their Own filming, oh, 42 uh, errors and whatnot. And they lost. I think we cost the Cubs a pennant, is it Well, you funny. know, Andre's got those bad knees, man. His knees are like... Well, they wouldn't let us run on the grass. No? So we're shooting in Wrigley Field, baseball mecca for millions, and we get in there, and I've got my son and our, our gloves, and we're thinking, hey, get off the grass! <laughs> hey! Hey! These guys are those kind of like industrial uniforms that say yeah. something like Servco on it or something like that. So it's a real field of dream this. moments oh, for yeah, you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got to take a commercial. Go, I'm bad go, go, at this. Go. I haven't learned yet. We got to take a commercial. We'll be right back with Tom Hanks. Sorry. This portion of the Dennis Miller Show is brought to you by Mitsubishi. The word is getting around. Eclipse. Noun. The motion of one heavenly body passing in front of another. An eclipse occurs only with the perfect alignment of arcs and curves and angles. Eclipse, verb. To surpass. To cast in shadow. To leave others behind. The stunning eclipse for 1992. From Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. <coughs> George, it's Mother. I know you're sick. Look by your bed. That's the number one cough medicine. Take it and call me in the morning. Thanks, Mom. But this cold is massive. I need NyQuil. With your cough medicine, I'd still be up tonight, sneezing and aching. And, Mom, I gotta rest, because tomorrow I'm eloping. Good night. Vicks NyQuil, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you can rest medicine. Also available in new liquid caps. I think you're looking for something. He's every woman's fantasy. He kept whispering to me to be loud, and I couldn't stop. And every woman's nightmare. You're scaring me! You're scaring yourself. To trap him. I'd like to photograph him. This district attorney will have to make the ultimate sacrifice. <laughs> what are you afraid of? <laughs> Want to ride? <laughs> Patrick Bergen, Sean Young, Love Crimes, Rated R. Starts Friday, January 24th at theaters everywhere. Goes the sun. Going, going, gone. Do it again, Daddy. Lifesavers candy. Isn't life delicious? If you're not using advanced cleaning formula Jet Dry Rinse Agent, you're gambling on getting clean dishes. Jet Dry rinses off invisible residues dishwasher detergents leave behind. Try advanced cleaning formula Jet Dry and bet on cleaner dishes. Hello? Hello, Pat. This is Jim Mercer, your boss. Mr. Mercer, what a pleasant surprise. I'm watching a commercial. You have anything to do with this? Sir? The car is just sitting there. Well, we thought the offer was enough. The offer? You know, cash back, first-time buyer's assistance. Look at that financing. The offer? 
Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Listen, keep up the good work. Okay. You know, some people are impressed with expensive foreign cars. I used to be one of those people. Now I drive a Cadillac. I think it's every bit as good as any foreign car you can buy. In fact, it's proof the world-class quality can come out of Detroit. And you know me, it takes something very special for me to say anything nice about Detroit. Can you possibly be as nice as you seem? Yes, ma'am. In that case, how about some tickets to a game? No. Can I get a picture of you and my husband? You know, I'm your biggest fan. And Mike, how about a game of horse? Can't you see I'm doing a commercial? Hey, Michael, is that your blazer? Yep. We have a ride? Sure, hop in. This weekend, shop the great outdoors at a Swaparama flea market. Thousands of bargains, always something new and different. Food, clothing, hardware, everything your family needs. And if it rains, we're open indoors. Swaparama, real bargains for real people. 3-4-4-7-3-hundred. Sometimes when you're not aware of my presence, I stand on the hillside as you visit Hooch's gravesite. And uh, that special little pooch really yeah. got into your bloodstream, didn't they? We, we killed the dog. You know? <laughs> the grand Disney tradition, the dog must die. But, uh, but that film knocked off like 80 mil, didn't it? It did quite That's well. That's 560 mil. dog mil. So... Uh, <laughs> I think, I think Hoochie had some back-end money on that, didn't he? I think, yeah, I think Hooch is looking for property in Montana right now. <laughs> hey, would you... Now, I hear you like the Philip Kennedy, did you, or JFK. Did you, did you dig that film? Yeah. I thought it was great. <clears throat> oh, I was. I, the reason is because it, it has all the mystery. I mean, you have the open window. You have the, the mystery gunman. You have the man who single-handedly turned a desert into a gam gambling mecca. I'm sorry, I, I, did you say JFK? <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, I just completely... And I'm so blank with fear that it's my first show, I'm thinking, that sounds like Bugsy, but... Uh, I wasn't was, even gonna say anything. That was, that's my mistake, I'm sorry. I got seen a lot of movies, man. Yeah. JFK, is, was he the nanny who came in and did the thing with his... I'm sorry. <laughs> I've seen a lot. I've been on a tear as far as movies go. I've been seeing two a week. So. Yeah. Well, well now, uh, did you see Oliver Stone with Sam Donaldson? Donaldson jumped him? On uh, recently, just yeah. like last Thursday? Yeah. Kind of hung him out to dry there. Yeah. Like, I'm, would you walk into an interview with uh, Sam Donald Donaldson? Well, I think Donaldson was just cranky because there's a theory there was a second gunman behind his toupee. And uh, <laughs> I think that's why I was I thinking. haven't seen hair that bad since Pete Rose, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, like Walter he's, Mondale, he's, like he had, Walter Mondale had better hair than Sam Donaldson. Sammy's got that young Vulcan with a dream thing going <laughs> on. Hey, that, uh, yeah, I want to say, hey, Sam, didn't you die in the two-parter that Spock appeared on in the middle <laughs> Captain of? Captain Wasn't that you? Yeah, he's got that little inlet there. It looked like where Elvis got married in Blue uh, Hawaii. <laughs> Looks like uh, Sarek, you know. Aren't you married to Father Knows Best Wife or something like that? <laughs> Help us before we sub-reference again. We are referencing again. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. A line from, uh, from you. Yeah. Now, what, uh, what's up with Chet the Jet, your young boy? My young man. man. How well, is he's, he? Uh, he's very good. 17 months old. And <clears throat> my older kids are well as well. Oh, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> no, I'm going to slag on I, my kids. I find kid. it hard to believe you, you have know, old kids. You know, if your nose was just a little <laughs> thing and... How old you got to get you a haircut, too. Honey, why are you dressing him like this? Oh, he's a beautiful, adorable little baby. What am I going to say? And you're living up in Xanadu now? I hear you, you, you built a place, man. It was like Charles yes, Foster Yes, I Kane, decided, man. yes. Uh, in, in Xanadu, did I decree a stately pleasure dome or something like that? Yeah. What, what, is that what is that quote at the beginning of the, the thing? I don't know. Citizen I thought that was Kane. a Quicksilver Messenger service lyric you were doing there or something. <laughs> Have a beautiful day. What happened? Traffic. What happened to the really good bands? Of the, I, think, uh, I, think tra I think Mountain's getting back. I never listen, to come I never, on this show. My brother huh? listened to that stuff. I never listened to those bands. No? He'd put on Blue Cheer and... <clears throat> <laughs>
Summer, summertime I go blues, watch right? Ultraman on UHF television. For yeah, did you time. see that fight in the Japanese Congress they had a few weeks ago? Well, no, what was Fist it? fight broke out in the Japanese Congress right on the floor. The senators duking each other. Evidently, some of the guys thought Ultraman was a good guy. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the Japanese as a people are going to have to wrestle with that question but, before they can... Uh, <laughs> At least the bigger ones will. Um, you know what I finally saw? I saw Cirque du Soleil, and you had always told me, I, oh, yeah, I always it. admire your opinion about things, and you told me that that was some of the most beautiful theater you had seen. And I, I said loved that, that scene I? at yeah. the end. But yeah. I, know, I finally saw well, what you Well, you saw mean. the thing on TV? No, no, I went to you see saw them in New York. Yes. Yeah, it was great. The, the, did you see the, the recent one? Yeah, where it? the guy metamorphosed. Mm. The clown. The yeah, yes, uh, David Shiner, an amazing, an amazing performer. David. But it was great. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's cool. I'm always open to all that kind of uh, stimuli. <laughs> well, you know, I want to I want to thank you for coming on. Like I said, it's, I felt like Vic Morrow trying to get somebody to take the point in combat, and uh, you were right there for me, brother. Anytime, I appreciate anytime, it, Tommy. Anytime. Tom Hanks, folks. Thank you. Thanks, man. If you're going to be in Los Angeles and would like to attend a taping of The Dennis Miller Show, please drop us a note. Care of The Dennis Miller Show, Post Office Box 8160, Universal City. Where I grew up in Dakota, there's a guy named Denny Healy. He had this 57 Cadillac and he used to drive us around, uh, play ball games in Montana, Dakota. Sometimes he'd be in that car six or seven hours. That was a classic, that Cadillac. But so was Denny. We'd come back late at night, we'd be talking about the game, about winning, about competitiveness. Uh, teamwork. I learned a lot from Denny Healy, considering the length of those trips. I learned a lot about a comfortable ride. The storm continues tonight. The National Weather Bureau reports winds whipping up to 35 miles per hour, with snow drifting in some parts up to four feet. Meanwhile, over at the stadium earlier, the Bulls were victorious, 122 to 109. Michael Jordan leading all scores with 37. I had an uncle that was a Cadillac dealer in Wolf Point, Montana, so I rode in Cadillacs a lot when I was a kid. It's a quality car. It's, it's a car that has an image that I've appreciated and, and uh, liked. It kind of speaks for itself as to uh, a form of excellence, something that is, uh, has been well thought out, not just uh, you know now, but in the past, too. I believe we make good products in this country. And Cadillac's the one that represents that. of your round ball playing field. 94 feet. Who's taller, you or Larry Bird? Larry's taller, but I'm better looking. Oh, oh, nice nice to hey, why you stick your tongue out when you shoot? How did you get where you are today? Chevy. Chevy? I drove today. Juice, how far will I go to get it? <laughs> and she never won a Grammy. My next guest would still be someone very special to have on my first show. The fact that she's won four Grammys in two years ago and she's now nominated for five more this year only means that the world has caught up a, a little late, I might add. Singing I Can't Make You Love Me off her new album, here's Bonnie Raitt.
Sometimes showbiz just works. You know, I've been watching you for years. I've always loved you, and uh, it's just great to see somebody who sticks to their guns finally get their just desserts like you. Thank it's you really. Uh, yeah. Now, I'm wondering how you summon up the angst to sing that sound anymore, because your life's going great guns, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. Well, I have a good memory for that kind of pain. <laughs> You know, it's a pain tattoo. Yeah, you know, they always say when you're a blues singer, you know, if your life ever gets happy, look out. But thank God, you remember, you remember the stuff that hurts and most of the other stuff you forget. So. Yeah. Now, you got an old man now, huh? I love that phrase. I don't usually use it, but it just seems like you'd be cool enough to say, yeah, that's yeah, my I old man. Old man yeah. <laughs> I got the permanent version this time. Yeah. He's such a sweet guy. I used to see him at Saturday Night Live parties. He would come in once in a while. I always thought your husband was, before I even knew who he was, just a real, he's a gentle soul, isn't he? Yeah, nice Michael's guy. Yeah, Michael's great. And he's on tour in a play right now, so we're, I just finished six months of nonstop touring, thinking we would finally have a couple of months together. And now he got a five-month tour in a, in a national tour of A Few Good Men, which is a, mm -hmm. something I was starring in for a while. And <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's, uh... Joke. But, but uh, <laughs> anyway, well, I guess I'll be commuting to visit him now. He's a great guy. Hi, Michael, if you're watching. Her husband, of course, Michael Nesmith from the Monkees. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> Good. 
<laughs> and your dad, this is that that has to be the ultimate th uh, thrill. Like I think all little girls must think of their dad as a big star, like in their own heart. And finally, your dad's uh, getting his own star on the Hollywood Hall of Walk of Fame. That's neat, huh? Exactly. And he's here, John. So far, John. Hatt. Now, you told me he gets to pick the spot out, right? Because that's a pretty cheesy part of town right now, isn't it? Well, they're working on it, you know, but I'm sure it's been a long time before, he, uh, since he had walked up and down the street. And uh, I think you're between Walter Matthau and Tony Randall. It's a nice thing to split up an odd couple like that in Hollywood, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I went to see him play Saturday night. He did a concert and just laid me right out. The best singer I've ever heard. Oh, like, that's a nice daughter. Thank you for coming on, Bonnie. I appreciate it. We'll be right back with Christian Slater, folks. Bonnie Ray. Yeah. If potato chips are going to cross your lips, keep them fresh. Make them fine all the time. That's Pringles. Pop the Pringles. Not like chips in a bag. They don't stay fresh. It's a brag. Your hands full of greases. We've got whole go, crunchy go, chips, go, clean and crispy go, go, to your lips. Go. Pringles, pop the Pringles. Go for fresh because Pringles go, got them. Go, go. Fresh pop right to the bottom. Once you pop, you yeah. can't, you can't, you yeah. can't stop. Six o'clock Friday night, there's nothing I can say. Vacation time. Road trip. Whose car? No, not mine. Oh, you got the four-door. Four-door Tercel. There's only three of us. We'll need the room. Starting at around $8,800, it's Toyota's lowest price four-door sedan. Okay, my car, my rules. Okay. First, no eating in it. Mm -hmm. No messing around in the car. Ah. And when we get back, you, you both help, help me wash it. <laughs> New four-door Tercel, because your values have changed, but your friends haven't. It's it, and that's that. <laughs> Nothing beats it. You want the bar across the street. <laughs> Life's the great beer that's left filling. It's everything you want a beer to be. Have you tried Folgers Coffee Singles? What? Coffee? In its own filter. Singular sensation. Every single cup you brew. It's like brewing a whole pot. What? One cup at a time. Singular sensation. Fresh brewed morning for you. There's ground roast in here. In its own filter. Folgers. Singular sensation. John. Folgers Coffee Singles. One sensational way to wake up. Now, some people are impressed with expensive foreign cars. I used to be one of those people. Now I drive a Cadillac. I think it's every bit as good as any foreign car you can buy. In fact, it's proof the world-class quality can come out of Detroit. And you know me, it takes something very special for me to say anything nice about Detroit. Mr. Mercer, what a pleasant surprise. I'm watching a commercial. You have anything to do with this? Sir? The car is just sitting there. Well, we thought the offer was enough. The offer? You know, cash back, first time buyer's assistance. Look at that financing. The offer? Mm hmm. Uh, um, right. Mm -hmm. Listen, keep up the good work. Okay. Where I grew up in Dakota, there's a guy named Denny Healy. He had this 57 Cadillac, and he used to drive us around, uh, play ball games in Montana, Dakota. Sometimes he'd be in that car six or seven hours. That was a classic, that Cadillac. But so was Denny. We'd come back late at night, we'd be talking about the game, about winning, about competitiveness, about teamwork. I learned a lot from Denny Healy, considering the length of those trips. I learned a lot about a comfortable ride. Weekend Morning News is coming to Chicago. Get the latest news along with complete weekend weather and sports starting Saturday morning at 8 on Channel 9.
forgot to mention Bonnie CD. It's Luck of the Draw, and it's in the uh, environmentally correct new CD case. So you can listen to it and not muck up the ecosystem. We've uh, a little bit past the halfway point of the show, and of course the audience is cleansing their palate, enjoying a little sorbet. How is it, audience? I believe, I believe tonight's flavor is mango. <laughs> Our next guest was good enough to take, out, uh, take time out from rehearsals of a play to join us tonight. You've seen him in Heather's Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and his new film, Cuffs, which just opened nationwide. Put that sorbet down and welcome Christian Slater. <laughs> Man, they love you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Even the East German it's women. Bad. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I think that was, that was Bankhead. <laughs> uh, now, you must feel great right now, because in this town, you have just become a very, uh, a very saleable entity. You've become the 400-pound gorilla, proven that you can open a film on your own, and they, uh, they well, love that out here, don't I they? I love man? him too. <laughs> uh, Cops, it's doing great, isn't it? Uh, I, well, I, I pretty much make it a practice to stay out of how uh, a film is doing uh, financially, because once uh, once I finish the project, I'm pretty much out of it. I, I uh, don't really have too much left to to say about it. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I, uh, well, no, I follow it because I have it. no life, and uh, <laughs> it's, doing, it's doing really well. Just man. starting. It's just starting, boy. Whew. I saw it the other night. People dug it. You know what? I, I, you really uh, that fourth wall thing is dangerous. Where I don't know if you've seen the film, Christian often turns to the camera and talks, and that can be really dicey unless it's done coolly. And you yeah. you pulled it off, man. You're yeah. great. I get the feeling you wrote a lot of that, didn't you? <laughs> well, I. I... <laughs> I don't know if a lot of it was down on paper. I guess I uh, uh, just sort of did a lot of it uh, spur of the moment kind of stuff, and, and fortunately they decided to keep... Because a director has a lot of power, you know? He can uh, do a lot of takes and just choose whatever he likes. Uh, I was grateful that he did uh, choose some of the takes, at least I, I did enjoy most yeah. doing. They wear you down. They yeah. just keep going until they finally get that take where, you Oof. know, you're doing this for them. And, right, uh, right, doing everything <laughs> possible. the one they can, always yes. use. Now, yes. did, I think we have a clip of the film. We're going to take mm. a look at it. Should we tell us? I can't believe it. It's like surreal to have your own show. I'm not say, one of your kids from this guy ever again, all right? I am not a kid. Calm down. Kid, kid, kid. <laughs> Would you tell him that, please? He's not a kid. Brad said I could go to the academy during the day and patrol with somebody at night. That's what I'm going to do. I spoke to the lawyer from the DA's office. He said the district's mine. I'm taking it. Has he ever been convicted of a felony? I'll bet he has. Shut up, Bill. Have you? <laughs> no. Did you graduate high school? Yes. You have to go through the academy. I know, I know. He's going to have to get his hair cut, put on a uniform, and get rid of that attitude. Hear me. The first time you screw up in any way, or if I catch you going after Kane, you're out of business. <laughs> well, it's good to know I have a loyal support team. If he doesn't realize it's the first time I screw up, I'll probably be dead. Uh, Thank you. Kind of a loud film. Yeah, yeah, it's a little... <laughs> blows you out of your chair. <laughs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> well, we had no sound here, but yeah. through the pure dynamic of his physical presence, we... <laughs> we sense the... the scene. Let's now, well, you must have director's problems now. You're, uh, you must know things can go wrong. You're doing a little play over here yeah, in Beverly no, Hills. I have a great deal of uh, respect for directors. I, I, uh, I am doing this little play, which I really... I uh, came over Saturday. I it was great. Yeah, a lot of fun. You did, you did show up. Uh, that, was, that was quite a... That was great for me. I yeah, it was it. cool. Yeah. You yeah. know, I sat behind Spock. 
Did you? Yeah. Under Nimue. Yeah, 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 it was so cool, man. Yeah. Spock was there. And I said, live long and prosper. He said, I'm watching the play. <laughs> <laughs> Off, cha -cha. <laughs> right. But it's a child's play. Tell them a little bit yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's uh, basically for ages 4 to 12, and it requires a lot of uh, audience participation. So we couldn't really... Uh... Actually, for the second performance, nobody showed up uh, except Jack Nicholson. So he was enough of an audience for us. <laughs> he, he provided enough of the uh, audience participation for all of us. So that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah I, I was thrilled by it. But as far as being a director... Uh, it's, it's definitely, uh, you know, actors, they come to you with a lot of suggestions, a lot of ideas, and, and I know that I, I have done the same kind of thing, and, and uh, uh, I basically should take this opportunity to make an amends to all the uh, directors I have worked with, because uh, I, I truly do understand where they're coming from when they say, shut up! Right. Enough! I can't take it anymore, so, uh, sorry. Sorry, guys. Well, at some point, they have to be the final arbiter, because you're right, there's so many disparate... Yeah. Beliefs going on yeah, there that it just gets too muddy. Yeah, a guy has to say, "Look, let's just tone it down a bit. Let's just sort of pull in the reins." But the with kids this, ate it up though. It was yeah, great. I mean, it was with a lot this with this cast and, and crew and everybody that's uh, been involved with it, because it is a uh, production for uh, the Pediatric AIDS Foundation, it right. is a way to raise money for a good cause. It, it's sort of been something that uh, has just evolved. It, it uh, I, I really didn't uh, have to do a lot. Everybody that is involved with it is so unbelievably talented and, and uh, professional that I uh, really haven't had much say. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just kind of sit there and, and uh, I just watch. You know? You're the figurehead. I, yeah, well, eh. Is the, the little kid Fre is the little kid Fred Savage's brother? Yeah, yeah, Ben Savage. Yeah, That's he was great. Huh? He's cute, isn't he? I, I love the guy. He's great. He is a good guy. Boy, those sibling rivalry in that family must be intense, <laughs> huh? You know? <laughs> Some kids get a bike. This kid's got an Emmy. Yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> that's got to eat at you. We're going to take a commercial. We'll be right back. This portion of the Dennis Miller Show is brought to you by Budweiser. And nothing beats a bud. That's me. Me again. Bullseye. Guess you could say I'm a magnet for stains. And each one meant money down the drain. Until I discovered New Ultra Dash. New Ultra Dash packs an extra stain-fighting ingredient that can power out some of the toughest stains. But it doesn't cost a fortune. Maybe I ought to tell them about Dash. New Ultra Dash. It cleans a mess for less. Things are different. The all-new Pontiac Grand Am proves it. Things are better. Because no import at its price can match the power of its 16-valve engine and the control of its standard anti-lock brakes. Not a cord, not Camry, no one. In fact, Consumer's Digest named the Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac's new Grand Am. A new kind of excitement. Can you possibly be as nice as you seem? Yes, ma'am. In that case, how about some tickets to a game? No. Can I get a picture of you and my husband? You know, I'm your biggest fan. And hey Mike, how about a game of horse? Can't you see I'm doing a commercial? Hey, Michael, is that your blazer? Yep. We have a ride? Sure, hop in. I had an uncle that was a Cadillac dealer in Wolf Point, Montana, so I rode in Cadillacs a lot when I was a kid. It's a quality car. It's, it's a car that has an image that I've appreciated and, and uh, liked. It kind of speaks for itself as to uh, a form of excellence, something that is uh, has been well thought out, not just uh, you know now, but in the past too. I believe we make good products in this country. And Cadillac's the one that represents that. Christian Slater. Now, Christian, I understand you're like a... Uh, somebody tell me you're a Star Wars buff? Uh, like Star Wars? I just... I, I basically like uh, superheroes. You know, I like... Uh, I've always wanted to be a superhero. I always wanted to be the kind of guy who saves the child from the burning building. But I didn't want to do it in the movies. I wanted to do it in real life. See? So that's... Opportunities that. uh, Opportunity, represent very, themselves well, in it's, life? It's rare. Caped Crusader? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny you mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> I'm but, Alfred. 
Um, uh, one uh, Halloween night, right? I I, uh, I went to to this party at this club, and I was dressed up in this Batman suit. You know, I had the whole thing, the cape, everything, the mask, and. <laughs> And I was walking out of the party. The party wasn't very good, so I was walking out, and I saw this guy, you know, beating up this woman, you know? I mean, he threw her down on the ground and was, like, kicking her and doing oh, all this wow. stuff. I flipped out, you know? So uh, keep in mind, it is Halloween night, right? It's very strange things occur. So I see this, and I go, hey, hey, you know? And I run across the street. I'm Batman. I'm Batman, right. <laughs> I run across the street and I leap up on this car. Yeah, you know? do it. And just as I'm coming down on the bad guy, the wig on the, on the woman falls off and it's a guy dressed up as a woman. Wow. Yeah. So I'm thinking, here, I'm gonna get the opportunity to save this damsel in distress and, and she's here in the audience. Jeez, <laughs> holy drag queen, Batman. It's unbelievable, holy <laughs> drag queen, exactly. <laughs> I got you a little, uh... What? We got you a little gift here. Oh, I know you're no. into Star Wars, oh, man. Oh, man. I got you a Chewbacca utility belt, and, uh... <laughs> oh, man. You see the critics right now? A Miller blatantly sucking up. <laughs> <laughs> but this, oh, this little... Is the we got a little Jedi utility yeah, belt here, the, uh, and, uh... Chewbacca there's, bandolier. There's Lando Clissarian, there's Frogman, there's where the condom goes, and, uh... <laughs> Steve Grepio. So oh there you go, God, man. That's great. Take it home and dig it. Thank you very much. I think much. it goes with that suit. I think it does. I'm a, I'll put there it on. There you go. I'll put it on backstage and we'll have a lot of fun, Dan. <laughs> have a lot of fun. You were a Princess Leia fan as a young kid, weren't you? Uh, well, I read that somewhere, like yeah, details or something. She was a little tiny, though. She was, uh, the figure. The figure was small. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, uh, I guess I basically used my imagination. Yeah, well, I hear she's a crazy yeah, Leia. She, hey, we've come to the end of the... Uh, <laughs> the show. We're out of time. I'd like to thank my guests, Tom Hanks, Bonnie Ray, Christian Slater, and by the way, I know my material can get a little reference heavy, so for those of you who'd like to get a leg up on tomorrow's monologue, here's some suggested reading. James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake. Finnegan's Wake. See you tomorrow with Bob Saget, Kenny Loggins, Victoria Jackson. Good night. Miller Show stay at the St. James Club and Hotel.